when the Yardbirds called me. I said, can I be their manager? Uh, I knew nothing about management. I didn't even know about rock music. I mean, I'd loved jazz and I'd played jazz as a musician, but um, I really knew nothing about rock. And, and almost at the beginning, we, were doing, we did a trip to Paris to play in a club, and um, the bass player, Paul Samuel Smith, took me aside and said, you know, I really hate, I hate live music. I hate going out and playing live. I, I really, it's the thing I dislike most is having to be on the road with the others. And I didn't understand that probably the manager, a group's manager's number one job is to keep a group together. If you keep a group together long enough, they'll have success. And they, you just hold them together somehow. And I knew nothing about that. So I said, oh, you poor chap, you're not enjoying yourself. That's terrible. You should leave and we'll get someone else in. Stupid, naive thing to say. But, but he left. And then I was stuck with the Yardbirds without a bass player. And then when I talked around, I talked to Jeff Beck, who was the guitarist in the group. And everybody said, well, it'd be fantastic if Jimmy Page had come in the group. And I knew Jimmy because I'd been uh, writing songs and having, doing sessions for the last two years. And Jimmy was basically just a session guitarist. So I asked if he'd come in the group, and he came in the group. So we now had these two fantastic guitarists, Britain's best two rock guitarists, perhaps the world's best two rock guitarists, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck playing on each side of the stage as all Jeff Beck's solos and stereo. It was, a, it was a fantastic thing to pull off, and it was, it was really sheer luck, sheer opportunism again. And then the next thing which happened was I was having dinner one night with my very good friend Kit Lambert, who managed The Who. And um, Kit was a real film buff. He'd been brought up in films. And um, he was thrilled because he'd heard that Antonioni, the famous Italian director, was in town and had come to London to make a film about swinging London and wanted The Who to play a, a, a part in the film because he'd heard about them smashing their instruments up and it seemed to Antonioni to, to suit the nihilistic London. Um, and Kit was going to see him the next day at the Savoy Hotel. Well, I was jealous. I was also brought up in the film industry. My dad was a film director. I'd seen all of Antonioni films when I was 10 or 11. And I was jealous, simple and jet that. So I said to Kit, you know, who are the best there is? You, you really mustn't let them go cheap. You ask for 10,000 pounds minimum, absolute minimum. And you've got to tell Antonioni, you get editing control. I mean, the section where they're in the film, you get editing control. And Kit was all fired up, so I will, I will, and did. And was thrown out in his ear in about five minutes. Uh, whereupon I phoned Antonioni, and very smarmy and nice, until I had probably the biggest group in the world, uh, uh, but above the Who, definitely. Only the Beatles and the Stones were above the Yardbirds. Could I come and see him? And um, he explained about the smashing real quick. I said, well, that's what we do every night. We smash a lot of them. The Who just copied us. And, um, and we love your films. Everyone in the group knows your films. They love them. And we'd love to do them. And, um, you know, and we leave it all to you because we know you, you just do it beautifully. And, and uh, he asked about a fee. And I said, oh, fees. No, it is art. You know, just do what you want. And so we got the part. So uh, the Yardbirds occurring in, in, in Blow Up, it was, it was a huge thing. And it really pushed their imagery and their, their name everywhere. Another bit of opportunist luck. And, uh, but it also had a big downside. Because when we went to Elstree Studios to film it, um, Antonio only wanted the smashing up of stuff. And Jeff wouldn't smash his guitar. He just simply wouldn't, nor would Jimmy. They loved their guitars. Jeff used to put his guitar to bed at night. He'd sing it a lullaby and he'd polish it to sleep. And um, in, event, in the end, we got a compromise. We bought some second-hand guitars and we'd push them through an amp. So he'd smash an amp. And he did it, and it was very good. And he did it very well. And Antonio Antoni only loved it. But so did Jeff. And when we got to America on the tour we were about to do, um, the tour came up at the beginning of my talk, we were like the old ladies, um, now old ladies, the groupie grannies went to it. Um, Jeff decided he'd like to go on doing this Antonioni's amp smashing trip. And the first night he smashed his guitar through the amp and then walked off stage and he didn't have an amp to play with. And then I was called into the dressing room afterwards to get another amp for the next night. Well, these were Marshall amps, and in the whole of America, there were only seven Marshall amps at the time. And I phoned around America, I found one in Miami, we had it flown up for the next gig, and Jeff, within five minutes, did exactly the same thing. And after seven nights, we'd run out of Marshall amps, Jeff left the group. So that was the downside of it. <laughs>